All right, boys and girls, today we're going to look at word problems dealing with volume. Let's look at number one. The volume of the box shown below is 135 cubic inches. I'm going to write that down so I can remember it later, just in case if I need it. Okay, now let's look at the box. I've got 9 inches, 3 inches, and then there's one that I don't know. It's labeled H. I wonder if that means height. Height starts with the letter H. And I know that height is the measurement from top to bottom of my rectangular prism. So we must be trying to look for H, the height. Let's keep reading. It says, what is the value of H? Hey, look at there. I figured out that I do need to find H. So let's look at what I do know. I do know that two of my sides are equal to 9 inches and 3 inches. And I know that the total volume, how many cubes I can fit into this box, is equal to 135 cubic inches. I bet I could plug all three of these numbers into my formula to figure out the height of my prism. Let's try that out. Okay, so I know that the volume is 135, and I know that length and width has to be 9 inches and 3 inches, but I don't know my height yet. Okay, I'm going to start by doing 9 times 3, which gives me 27, and now I know that something times 27 is going to give me 135. So whatever the height is times 27 will give me 135. Well, i got to figure out how many times 27 can go into 135. I'm going to guess and check. I can use my answer choices to guess and check. Let's plug in one of these answer choices that they have given me for height into my equation. Let's do the first one. 27 times 5. Okay, 7 times 5 is 35, bring down my 5, carry my 3, 5 times 2 is 10, plus 3 more is 13. Hey, would you look at there, that's the exact same volume that they gave me to begin with. So the height must be 5. Question number 1, the answer is 5 inches. That is what my height is supposed to be. Now let's look at number 2. It says, Georgia's swimming pool is shaped like a rectangular prism. The bottom of the pool has an area of 200 square feet. I'm going to highlight or underline that because it seems important. The depth of the pool is 5 feet. Okay, boys and girls, another name for depth is the height. See that the height is 5 feet, exactly the same thing as depth. Let's look at the question. It says, what is the volume of Georgia's swimming pool in cubic feet? I'm going to underline volume and I'm going to underline cubic feet because I know that that's what my answer has to have in it. Okay? But I only know that the height is 5 feet and the area is 200 square feet. Well, what makes up area, boys and girls, that we learned last year? Remember that formula, area is length times width? So that means that the long side and the short side together is 200 square feet. Okay, now let's look at my volume formula again. So if I know that the length times the width is 200 square feet, I can plug that in for a length times width, which is the same thing as area. So I'm going to plug in 200. Now I can multiply that by the height, which they gave me is 5 feet. So 200 times 5 is going to give me the volume of his swimming pool. Remember, find the fact that you do know 2 times 5 is 10. Now I've got to add my zeros from my problem to my answer. There's one zero, two zeros in my problem. So I have to add two zeros to my answer. 
I can't forget that my answer has to be in cubic feet, so I have to write cubic feet in my answer. The correct answer for number two should be C, 1,000 cubic feet. Okay, let's try two more. Let's look at number three. It says Matilda is filling a box with one inch sugar cubes. That means that each one of these cubes is equal to one inch. She filled the bottom with one layer as shown below. So the bottom layer of my cake has already been given to me. I wonder how many cubes are in my bottom layer. We can figure that out right now. There's one, two, three cubes that make up my width. And there's one, two, three, four cubes that make up my length. So I know that the area can be found by doing 3 times 4, which is 12. Let's see if there's 12 cubes in my bottom layer. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So there are 12 sugar cubes on my bottom layer of my rectangular prism. Okay, when she completely fills the box, how many sugar cubes will be in the box? When it means completely fills, they're talking about volume. How many total cubes can fit in my prism? So if I know that the base is worth 12 inches, and they've got a ruler over here, which lets me know that I can figure out the height using my ruler. Okay, 1 inch, 2 inch, 3 inch, 4 inch, 5 inch, 6 inch, but my prism stops right here at the end of my ruler. Okay, look at the half inches in between. So this line would be six and a half, so this line would mean that there's seven total inches. So my height is seven and my base is 12, so I can plug that into my formula. I've already done three times four, which gave me 12. Now I can do 12 times 7. 12 times 7 should be a fact that you know. 12 times 7 is 84. So there can be 84 cubes in my prism. Okay, let's look at the last one. It says, Andrew built a rectangular prism out of cubes as shown below. So here's his rectangular prism that he's created. Andrew wrote the expression 3 times 10 times 4 to represent the volume of the prism in cubic units. That's important. Remember, we measure volume in cubic units because there are three dimensions. Which expression below could be used to determine the volume of the prism? So, also, another equation. He used this equation. 3 times 10 times 4, and in parentheses, is 3 times 10, which means that he's going to multiply 3 times 10 first. This looks sort of like my volume formula. Length times width times height. So he's already going to multiply these two sides together. Okay, now let's look at our answer choices. Answer choice A says... 3 times 10 plus 4. Do we add when we find volume, boys and girls? No. And that's what he's trying to find in his problem. Let's look at B. 3 times 10 times 4. Okay? So they're multiplying every number with each other. So let's leave that one because we know that in our volume formula, length times width times height, we're multiplying the entire time. Okay, let's look at C. It says 4 times 3 plus 10. There's that adding again. We don't add when we are trying to find volume. Okay, let's look at D. 4 times 3 plus 4 times 10. They're adding again, boys and girls. Remember, in volume, our formula, we only multiply the three numbers together. That is why we're measuring it in cubic inches. Think there's three dimensions in my rectangular prism or my cube. So, cubic inches, three dimensions, just like he's done right here. 
Okay, let's see if we could just go ahead and figure out the answer for this. 3 times 10 times 4. Let's multiply 3 times 10 like he's going to do. That gives me 30. Then I have to multiply 30 by 4. 3 times 4 is a fact I know, which is 12. And I've got to add one zero from my problem to my answer. So the correct volume is 120 units cubed or cubic units. So one of these answer choices has to give me cubic units, 120 total. And I know that I don't add anywhere in my formula. Just like I've got it right here. So there's only one choice where they're multiplying straight across. So let's see if I can figure out the answer to that one and see if it's the same as his equation. Okay, so there is 3 times 10 times 4, and they've got parentheses around 10 times 4. 10 times 4 is 40, and I have to multiply 40 by 3. I know 3 times 4 is 12, and I've got an add a 0 from my problem to my answer. And hey, look, that gives me the same answer over again. Remember, boys and girls, I told you when we look at the formula, you can multiply any two sets of numbers you want to first. So he multiplied 3 times 10 first in his equation. But this equation is showing that, he's, that you can multiply 10 times 4 first and get the same answer in the end. So the correct answer for number 4 is B.